for this year is our year of greater victory. And you shall continue to enjoy greater victory in Jesus' name. I shall continue to enjoy greater victory in Jesus' name. We all and our families will continue to enjoy greater victories in this year, 2021, to the glory of God in Jesus' mighty name. So our text is from Psalm 91, verses 7 through 10, and also 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. I believe every one of us can recite 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But for the sake of those who may be joining us newly, I want to ask Brother uh, Sonny, can you open 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57 and read for us? Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Brother Sonny. I will quickly read Psalm 91 from verse 7. A thousand may fall, and, and as I read this, because it's a prayer, personalize it to yourself as well. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. It shall not come near me. Only with your eyes, with my eyes, shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. In the mighty name of Jesus. Those are scriptural word of faith for the year 2021, our year of greater victory. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me take the scripture reading for the month of July uh, right away. Uh, the month of July, our word of faith is increase uh, greater impacts, greater impacts. And that means increasing in impact. Given the kind of word the Lord taught us, the true riches throughout half of May and June, it is time for us to increase in Jesus' name. You shall increase, I shall increase in our impacts in the mighty name of Jesus. And so our text is Psalm 16, verses 5 and 6. Psalm 16, verses 5 and 6. Please write this down and read this scripture and pray with it as we're going to pray now. I'll read Psalm 16, verses 5 and 6. Oh, Lord, I'm reading the New King James Version. Oh, Lord. You are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. Oh Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. That will be your portion. That will be my portion. That will be our portion and the portion of the, our entire families in this month of July and for the rest of the year 2021 and all the days of our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So time for your testimonies and then we'll go into thanksgiving and intercessory prayers and then we'll go into the teaching, growing in the spirit, growing in the spirit. Hallelujah. So let's hear testimonies. What has the Lord done for you that we want to use to thank God? Please, not more than one minute. Very sharp. Once I was blind, now I can see. Thanks be to God. Go ahead. Who wants to go first? Feel free, open the light. Yes. Thanks. Uh, get it. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is my bed month. My bed day will be July. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Yes. July is also my bed to the Lord. Month. And my daughter also graduation on Friday. So I want to thank God for that. 
Praise Glory the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you. Thanks be to God. Excellent. Excellent. We give God thanks and praise for that. Um, your birth, birth, her birth month and the daughter graduating. The Lord has done her good. Yes, Sister Comfort, go ahead. Okay. Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Thank God for his saving grace. And yesterday I had a terrible accident, but you can hear me talking now very fine, even though I didn't mention. So it is today when the doctor examined me and asked how could such a thing fall on me, and this is where the only injury I had. So, and when this thing happened, I was crying, cried like a child, telling God, why, why am I facing all these kind of difficulties? But today, they helped me to see that for me to have this minor injury could not be ordinary, that it was God that saved me. So thank God for me. I am happy. I am fine. Everything is okay. Oh, we thank God for his, for the victory. Indeed, that's what we're talking about. You shall continue to have victory in Jesus' name, no matter what comes. Amen. God will continue to give you victory and your entire family. In Amen. The name of Jesus, I will really Amen. thank God for his deliverance. Amen. God bless you, man. Okay. Uh, if there is nobody else speaking, I want to thank God who has sustained us upon this platform, having this teaching session, and for keeping us all alive to see the second half of year 2021. And there are many great blessings the Lord has done for us. I personally, it's been awesome. And so I give God all the thanks. I thank God for your life. I thank God on behalf of every one of us here. Uh, so want to go into um, Thanksgiving now, Thanksgiving prayer. Okay, so Sonny open his line. Sonny, go ahead, just make it. Good morning, Pastor. Yeah, morning. Uh, I want to thank God for uh, what God has done for me and the, the students in the center. Pastor, you know that you prayed so much for their success. Yes. And uh, the result of JAM has just come up. Many of them uh, have really done well in that exam. So I want to thank God for that uh, victory and success that God gave to the children. God, may the Lord bless yeah. you for what you've done. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you indeed. We thank God. We thank God for the great things he, he has done. And uh, we, we extend our appreciation to the children and all glory be to God for that. So our texts for this theme, Growing in the Spirit, is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I'm reading from New King James Version. Growing in the spirit. Growing in the spirit. That is our theme for the month of July. And we will take it as long as it will uh, take us to finish this teaching because it is very important that we have this foundation. So Paul was the one speaking here uh, and to the Ephesians and of course to the church of Jesus Christ in general. You remember that this scripture actually started much earlier. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the connection that led to this statement started much earlier when he was talking about uh, from verse 11 that 
Jesus Christ himself has given some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the defying of the body of Christ. And then came this verse 13, says, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So our focus is growing in the spirit. Is Growing in the spirit simply means growing in Christ. <laughs> growing to the fullness of Christ, as this scripture shows here. So, as a Christian, the standard is Jesus Christ. You must, let's establish that. The standard is Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So, the, uh, we will adopt our usual model, which is the what, the why, and the how. You remember I told us, when you want to study something and understand it deeply, apply this model, framing model, the what, the why, and the how. What is it? What does it mean? Why is it important? Why do I need to know this thing? What is, or what, what, what is the essence of it? Why is it important? The why, the essence of that subject, and then how? How do I apply it, the how of it? So we're going to adopt that model in this study. And so to start, growth, growing is from the word growth or grow. Praise the name of the Lord. And we all know that as human beings, we have grown. You grow physically till you reach your full height, you cannot grow past that height anymore. Somebody like me, I've remained like this for a very long time. <laughs> I believe same with a lot of us who are connected here. So we all know growth. It means to increase in size or capacity, to increase in size or capacity. So that's the physical growth. You can also grow in knowledge, you can grow mentally, you can grow. Now, when we say grow in spirit, many people always limit it to just say, uh, oh, okay, um, supernatural manifestation. And again, that is one word that I will come back to, that we have to be careful. The word supernatural is being used in the Christian body, uh, so much so that people don't understand the subtle mix up of that word. At least my own Bible doesn't contain that word at all, supernatural, is not. And so we will come back to that. So growing in the spirit as a Christian is really talking about maturing, coming to that statue of Jesus Christ. Because as a Christian, you have been born again by the Spirit of God, and you have become a son or a daughter of God. It's now how you grow in that spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. That's what we're talking about here. And there are many things that we need to know that will help us to grow. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's look specifically at this scripture and make a few points of this, our text, because today is introduction. And then we will go into your contribution, because we want to raise questions. 
You know, the other thing is that when you want to also then understand things deeper, ask questions, ask questions. As you answer those questions, things will become clearer. So very simply, this text, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, has some very key points. As I have said, point number one is that Jesus Christ is the standard, is the yardstick, is the measure of the fullness that we have to grow to. So as a son, as a daughter of God, as a Christian, you are like Christ, Christ-like. You remember that. So growing in the spirit is to grow to the fullness of Christ, to be like him. Then the key points then to bring out of these texts, number one, is unity of the faith. So there is a key word there, the faith. What is the faith? Number two, knowledge of the Son of God. These are the two key aspects that Paul said we require to grow, that we have to come to the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God. When we have this two, then it will bring us to a perfect man. And will help us to attain the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. That's, in summary, that scripture, the structure of that scripture as we would study it, so you can follow. There are two main components there that Paul says. We require to come to this fullness. Number one is the unity of the faith. Note, the word is the faith. Number two is the knowledge of the Son of God. When we attain the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, it will bring us to a perfect man, to a perfect woman, to a perfect person. And the measure, we will attain the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Let's break down a few things here. Unity of the faith, the faith. What is this talking about? The faith here is talking about understanding of the truth. <laughs> that is the faith, the faith, the truth. of God, the truth about God, the truth of the word of God. So we're going to raise a number of questions about that. So what are the truths of the word of God and about God that we are supposed to understand? Because if you don't have this foundation, you cannot grow. When we talk about growth, I think growth in biology with respect to plant is a very good example. As I say this, I already remember that there are experts in, in the room. Somebody like uh, uh, Sister Comfort taught, taught biology, I remember at a very high, high, high level. So we talk about, when we talk about 
the growth of plants, we talk about condition for growth, conditions, that the conditions have to be right. If you start all the way from germination, condition for germination, before you then even talk about, yeah, the plant continuing to grow. So there has to be the appropriate condition. You know, the nutrients in the soil has to be there, you know, and all the other things, the sunlight, you remember all that? You remember the care, all that, okay. So what is or are the truths that we are supposed to know? The second part talks about the knowledge of the Son of God. Paul talked about the mystery of Christ. It is this that will bring us to attaining that perfect, that maturity, that perfect person, that mature person that is like Christ, that mature Christian that is like Christ. Glory be to God. And attain the fullness of the statue of the measure of Christ. Okay. So some questions, as I've said, what are the true, true understanding of the faith that we must possess? What are the cardinal? So you may note the questions, yeah? What are the cardinal and foundational things of the faith or of the truth? that we must know. Do I take that again so you note it? Because you're going to add your own questions. We're just going to use this day to raise questions that we're going to be dealing with. But I'll just share a few more scriptures. So you see that it is the foundation all contained in the word, the Bible. That's why the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. The word of truth. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay. So, I say, what are the true understanding of the faith we must possess? That's question one. What are the cardinal and foundational things of the faith? Of the truth, we must know what are the cardinal and foundational things of the faith that is of the truth we must know. Praise the name of the Lord. The reference here was about the church or the body of Christ. So one question to also raise about the things we must know is what is the church or the body of Christ? Is the body of Christ the same as the church? Is any denominations the body of Christ? Is there any denomination? Is any denominations? the body of Christ, let's note that. Praise the name of the Lord. I have more questions to ask. When we go into the second part, the knowledge of Christ, a few questions to note. Does a Christian increase in anointing or is given the measure of the Spirit? Does a Christian increase in anointing or is given the measure of the Spirit? More questions. Does the manifestation of the Spirit in power and character, that is gift and fruit, come as a gradual process? Or put it this way. Is the manifestation of 
the spirit in power and character, which is fruit, and which is gift and fruit, a gradual process. Is it a gradual process? Another question. We're talking about growing in the spirit, growing to the stature of Christ. Can we compare a newborn Christian, a newborn again Christian with Adam, created as a full man in the Garden of Eden before the fall? Can we compare a newborn again Christian with Adam in the Garden of Eden before the fall? These are some of the questions we will explore, and there are many more we will discover. Now, talking about the faith, I want us to just read two more scriptures, and then I will add your own questions that we need to put to this. Turn with me to Jude, Jude chapter. Oh, Jude, Jude is only one chapter. Anyway, Jude 1, uh, verse 3. Jude 1, verse 3. Read it with me. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, so that can be our common faith as well, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. Can you see now what we're talking about? This is what we have to contend for. The truth, the cardinal and foundational things that we must know which are true about God and his son, Jesus Christ, so we may grow thereby. about the provisions that God has provided for us as practices taught in the Bible by the uh, apostles so we can grow. That we may know the things that God has revealed by his spirit all contained in the Bible that we may grow thereby to that fullness of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's read Luke chapter 2, verse 52, and then we'll listen to your contribution. Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Praise the name of the Lord. What does the Bible say there? He said, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Jesus increased. Hallelujah. That's what we're talking about. Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Now, what questions do you have? I have my pen ready to write because we want to go into this. We must grow to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, and we are to grow to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Please feel free, open the line, type your texts, and let's hear the questions. Yes, Sonny, please go ahead. Uh, yes, Pastor, I want to ask, I see based on the
on the text you just read, the efficiency. I want to ask about the, the all drink here. The, uh, the, the Bible says, we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. I'm asking, are we to come to the faith first before having the knowledge of the Son of God? Or is it, uh, is it not for us to have the knowledge of the Son of God for then we now start having our faith? So I want to know which one that should come first between you know, growing in the faith here or have come into the unity of faith and having the knowledge of the Son of God. Which one should come first? Good, good question, uh, Sonny. I've noted it. Like I said, I want us to raise questions. Let's raise questions. I have heard your question and it is noted. Noted. Faith or the knowledge of the Son of God. Which one comes first? Faith or the knowledge of the Son of God. Which one comes first? That's your question. Yeah? We would address it. So, any more questions? Yes. And Pastor, my second question is this. Uh, uh, more often, we hear people saying that uh, there is no perfect man. Nobody is perfect. But here, the Bible says, uh, uh, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. I want to ask if there is any way one can be perfect in his knowledge of the Son of God and by, you know, in his own way of doing things. That's my second question. Is there any way one can be perfect? Okay. I want to leave it here. All right. Uh, Sonny, I think we can at least address the straightforward one. Is it faith, this scripture, faith first, and uh, knowledge of the Son of God next? from these texts, yeah, just to make that clear so that the text, that you can read the text again and get the understanding. It says, um, till we all come to the unity of the faith and, so it is together, Brother Sonny, do note that, you know, and is a conjunction, right? It's going together. It didn't put one before the other. So, the Bible says, even if you were thinking in terms of faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, it is the revelation uh, of the Son of God that by the word of God, isn't it, that makes us to come to Christ, makes us to yield to him. So the scripture there is combining the two. It didn't say one precedes the other. It said we need both. So the, just to put that question to Beth, that it is not one before the other or the other. Faith is in the Son of God. It is in the knowledge of the Son of God, the revelation. So the scripture here say, till we come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. That, those two, together will bring us to attaining that perfect man, that mature, perfect man here is that mature Christian. Yeah, we'll come to that. And to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, perfect in God's expectation, God's standard, whatever God has said and kept for you and me. We've attained to it. And we will reach there, God willing, as we come to the depth of this teaching. Okay. So if we don't have a number of this foundation right, it will be difficult for you to grow in spirit. And that's why many people desire to see great manifestations of God, and yet they are not seeing. Because as I taught us here, God operates by principle. And if you want to understand, you know, Jesus Christ usually used to tell his disciples, he said, if I tell you earthly things, you don't understand how much more when I tell you things of heaven. And so he says, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So God's setting on the earth is 
again, uh, a, pr a reflection of the setting of God in the spiritual that we don't know. For example, I'm talking about the principles of the kingdom of heaven. In the natural world here, there are laws that operate that govern this physical world. The earth, as you know, is suspended in space. Do you know how the earth is suspended in space? By the laws of gravitational pull and all that. The aeroplane, as heavy as it is, carrying how many people? Over 200 people will take off and fly. How? Why? Because it obeys the law of uh, lifts, thrusts, and lifts. That aerodynamic design around the aeroplane body, carefully designed, all that. Men are able to launch a rocket from the earth and it lands in the space by simply obeying the laws that have been set to govern this physical world. So there are principles of the kingdom of God. You remember, we read that in Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 and 19. Yeah? So, if you want to grow to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, then you have to come to this foundation, have the right foundation of the truth. And the revelation of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. We're gonna leave it here and pray. I was talking about um, Matthew chapter 16 again, talking about the principles of the kingdom of heaven in verse 18 and 19. It says, and I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 19, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I will give you the keys. It didn't say the key. It said the keys. So this keys here is referring to the principles of the kingdom of heaven. And when you apply the principles of the kingdom of heaven, the results that God has set for it to bring will happen. That's what it means here, what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and what you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven with the principles of the kingdom of heaven. So that's why we need the truth of the word of God. This is where we will leave it for today, and we want to pray more. If you have connected and you're hearing this teaching, introduction to growing in the spirit, foundation is you have to be born again. You can only be born again through Jesus Christ. You have not given your life to Jesus. We can't be talking about growth. So at this point, we want to pray that you may surrender your life to Jesus. And so pray with me, whether you're hearing, joining on Facebook or uh, here on uh, Zoom, let us pray. We're going to take Two prayer points, this one and then we're going to pray again, declaring the word of God over your life for this month. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God Almighty, we thank you for your word. Thank you for teaching us. And Lord, we ask that you bring us to the unity of the faith to know your truth and the knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, who rose from the dead, who ascended to heaven, who is seated at the right hand of God. 
having all power, authority, dominion, and preeminence over all creation of God in heaven and on earth. And him alone, God Almighty, our Father, you have given the right to save humankind. And so, Lord, we thank you. And we pray, Lord, right now, anyone, of, anyone connected who has not come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, by your mercy, draw that person to yourself. So go ahead and pray with me and say, Father God, I repent of my sins and I surrender to you, almighty God. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my, and my Savior. Father, forgive my sins. Lord Jesus, you are my Savior. You are my Redeemer. You died for me. Father, forgive my sins. And now, Lord, give me your Holy Spirit to transform my life and help me to fulfill all your will and your purpose for my life and help me to grow to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ for my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, every one of us, join up your voice together and pray according to this word and say, Father God, by your spirit, teach me and cause me to grow. To grow to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ for my life that in this month of July, I will increase in wisdom and in stature, and I will make great impact and, and will glorify your name. Thank you, my Father, my God. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. God bless you.